Good morning. Today I have a chance to say good morning and we are here at uh, our special our time in the morning on Thursday and uh, the topic of today will be managing straight, managing better life. But let me say, I'm Ying Nantawan, working here at Bangkok Hospital Phuket, and I'm working with BDMS Group. And I'm happy here to welcome Dr. Anika Jacqueline Kai. She's also the, uh, uh, belong to BDMS Group, and she is a psychiatrist. Welcome. Thank you for having me today. You see that I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm very excited today. And the topic is really concerned in our everyday life. Yeah. Uh, we are talking about stress and I'm, I'm thinking we are now, let me say, passing the long period of time, people all over the world here. Yeah, we are staying and stucking, stucking and fighting with this word. And uh, can you help me, can you help us to define this topic about stress? Sure. Um, so let's start off with what is considered stress. Uh, yes. Um, stress can be a whole area of things, but that's how it manifests, how it, how people see it or feel it. But let's start with what's causing mm. the stress. I mean, it can be both stuff outside of us, mm -hmm. external or internal mm -hmm. inside us that are constant stressors that kick off a chain reaction in our bodies that then send off all of these chemical reactions that then manifest into all of these symptoms that are then coined stress. Mm -hmm. um, there were two people, um, Thomas Holmes and Richard Ray, they, developed a checklist of life events, 43 life events, both positive and negative. I mean, from losing your spouse to just getting a traffic ticket, which doesn't really happen that often in Thailand. But I mean, what they found is of all of these 43 life situations, be them good or bad, mm -hmm. it makes you have to adapt. And that adaptation in life itself is what causes us to have stress. Yeah, but anyway, we have to continue living exactly. and we have to stay with it. That maybe after uh, we define our stress, uh, stress and then we, we have to, to see how to deal with it. And I think since we are here with the expert, um, beside taking care of ourselves, I also have to ask the expert, how should we, when should I know that I already have stress? I, I feel I'm okay, but maybe someone else, someone who, who, who has surrounded us feel that, no, 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 it's not okay. Well, yeah, I mean, we, it's very good to be self-observant, to mm -hmm. know our own selves, but humans are social animals we don't live just by ourselves i mean we have our friends our colleagues mm -hmm. our family so it's also good to be on the watch of those around us of are they changing are they in, in any way different um like i said stress can manifest in very different ways i mean it could be cognitive how we're thinking um, our physical body reactions, our behaviors, or even our emotions can change. I mean, the easy things that people might notice that they're stressful are people that are always irritable, they're moody, um, they're snapping at you. Okay, they, they're having a bad day, something's off. But I mean, on the other hand, um, people that are having difficulty concentrating, their memory is going, I can't find my keys. I can never find my keys. Mm -hmm. Or 
or people that are just always fidgeting. There's something going on inside. Or, I mean, some people will comfort feed. I mean, they'll just, okay, it's durian season just passed and we will see a lot of people having durian yes. and durian is really good mm. right so yeah but there's a step where are you eating way too much and you're feeding your anxiety or are you just oh, durian yeah well i won't have that and it, what, you used to <laughs> love durian and you're saying no something's oh. wrong where are you where's that person i know oh and it has nothing to do with you being diabetic and you're, you're following your doctor's orders. That oh, that, not, that's something that's different. Reasonable. Yeah. That's reasonable. But, but if there is no reason, we have to check ourselves. Yeah, well, you're mm -hmm. supposed to love this and you're saying, nah, you can't be bothered. Okay, something's wrong there. Um, let's see what else. Um, sleep patterns have changed. You're either uh, sleeping like a koala bear all the time or you're not sleeping at all. Mm -hmm. Um, is work not working out? I mean, are you missing deadlines? Are you getting in trouble with your colleagues, your bosses? Um, are you just flaking out? I mean, there are all sorts of things. But what I find very common in ties is there will be those aches and pains, what psychiatrists sometimes call psychosomatic disorders. I mean, mm -hmm. I've got a migraine, I've got a headache, I've got office syndrome, I've got all these aches and pains, or I can't hold it, I need to rush off to the bathroom and have diarrhea, mm. or on the flip side, I can't go to the bathroom at all and I have constipation. Oh, oh, so see. basically the whole internal organs are shot. I mean, there's I mean, we can sometimes notice people having palpitations. I can't breathe. It, it, it's a vast area, which is why even though we might be on the lookout for mm -hmm. both ourselves and those we care about, we can sometimes miss it because it's different in every person and in the same person, it can change over mm -hmm. time. It, it, it changes. So let me share then, since you explained to, to us a lot of samples, and I feel like now I'm seeing a lot of people around me uh, who has that kind of uh, feeling, and it's everywhere. It seems like there are many people around us who have stress now. I, I have someone who, who ignore what he like to do, uh, and I, I, I saw someone who stopped going out and I met someone who keep going out and spend all the night and try to be outside the house until everywhere closed down and then he will return or he has no more energy. So it seems like people are facing a lot of stress, but uh, of, of course, someone, uh, they observe themselves, but someone let other people observe. For example, now that they, people enjoy chatting or posting something on uh, many platforms. For example, you show them a picture, but nobody like it, then you are sad. Or you're waiting for someone to say something good, and then you will feel happy. Uh, you're not happy to post it by yourself, but you are waiting for the compliment, for example. That also causes a lot of stress if you're expecting a lot from others. If, if you're waiting for the recognition from other people and you're not able to cheer your own self up or be mm -hmm. confident that, hey, I'm a good person and I'm a lovely person, it can be very stressful. And it is the insecurity of, am I good enough? Mm -hmm. And especially when you are waiting for all of those compliments, those likes, those loves, and the new one is what, care? Mm -hmm. it, it's, mm -hmm. people of this current social media age are so reliant on all of those likes that sometimes you forget the person right next to us. Those, yes. <laughs> because, I mean, <laughs> We are expecting future. We are not happy with the present. Exactly. <laughs> but that time being. So um, since we have so many people that, yeah, including me, I have to say, uh, we may not define ourselves that we already have stress. 
then what's the way to check ourselves if we we always keep saying i'm fine maybe a couple of days i will be better but it's already two weeks long it's already two months long or two years long so how should we what should we do well for start to treat to, to be treated to be treated well to be treated you first need to come see somebody first <laughs> see somebody in white gown <laughs> it's the dress code it's the dress code and it, it, it varies i mean um it, it when i mean it varies is like uh, when i did my electives in australia or london we weren't allowed to wear our coats basically the idea behind that was not all people who come to see a psychiatrist are psychotic, mm -hmm. are depressed, mm -hmm. are bipolar disorder. They might just have stress and need someone who is a third party who has no mm -hmm. ins and outs, has no benefits from any of these conversations, and is there to be a hearing board of, okay, this is what I'm feeling, this is what's happening in my life, what do I do? Um, these days, it doesn't have to be just a psychiatrist. It could be a psychologist, a psychotherapist, or even a coach, mm. uh, life coach, coaching, brain-based coaching. It depends more of what's going on in the dialogue. And one of the key um, ethics of coaches, according to the International Coach Federation, is you can only coach people who do not have a psychiatric diagnosis. I see. As soon as you realize that, okay, this person is not coachable because they're depressed, they're suicidal, say for instance, oh, okay. Uh -huh. Then you, by your ethical binding, you are to refer them to a psychiatrist. And hopefully they do. And people, <laughs> it, it's a stigma thing. I mean, when I first started being a psychiatrist, not that many people would come to see a psychiatrist. They would say, I have to be crazy and be in the loony bin to come see a psychiatrist. And say, no, you don't. You can just have trouble sleeping. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't hold your drink. You're drinking all the time. Every time you keep getting into car accidents because you're drunk. Mm -hmm. um, or you're, you're having a relationship problem. Those are instances where you might not be psychotic or bipolar, but you need someone there to help you. Be, be by your, not be by your side, because sometimes that can be confusing. You have to choose my side. You're my doctor, you have to choose me. We have to be neutral <laughs> of this is right, this is wrong, but it depends on what you choose. Oh, uh, let me say, since I'm a common people, like common lady, I think it, I'm not sure about other country, but but the Thai way, uh, since I experienced, I think it's a very long way to see the psychiatrist at the end of the road, because, yeah. for example, some may start talking to friend, mm -hmm. friends, or someone special, and may go to the temple, may go to the church, may go to Oh, tarot reader. Yeah, and fortune teller, yep. even fortune teller in the computer system. Exactly. And until they cannot handle it. And someone, maybe they, they still think that they can handle it, but the one in the family may realize that, no, we can handle this sister or brother anymore. And then at that time, maybe it's hard to, to treat. Mm -hmm. It depends, but mm -hmm. true. I mean, the family support, actually, all support networks are very important. And they, even if eventually you do come see a doctor, those support systems are still very essential in everybody's recovery. Because we've, like I said, stress is out there. It's, like I said, it could be good things. It could be bad things. It's there. We need to learn to adapt in a more healthier way mm -hmm. so that whenever all of, any of those changes happen we're resilient we we can survive besides besides selecting who should we talk to i think there are also many options someone may go out hang out and drink not social drink 
but drink till he drops, <laughs> something yeah. like that. And uh, so when having another problem after that, like drinking too much, as you just mentioned, may cause car accident, motorcycle accident. Or they might or, have an ulcer and bleed to death. Or, or, or killing the organs inside yeah. by drinking too much yeah. and having kind of another diseases. Yeah. And I think uh, if they have everything like that, it will be like, that is the time. Should, should, should not wait that, that long. <laughs> yeah, th those are the more difficult <laughs> cases that take mm -hmm. more time because the stress, the problems have accumulated. I mean, the Thais have a very good metaphor, Din Pok Hang Mu, which I, for the love of me, I can't think of the English version, but basically you keep getting the problem on top and top and top and top until it's so it's hard blood. it explodes i mean <laughs> it it you hit bottom sometimes you have to hit rock bottom sometimes in order to then realize i need help yes and sometimes it's still salvageable but sometimes it takes a whole lot of effort but in that moment the support systems are still very very important Yes, yeah, so um, I think there is a word called like pain score mm -hmm. chart. Mm -hmm. I think we should have kind of straight score chart. <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> there, there, there is. Um, there are several stress scores or stress scales available. And basically, again, it's like the pain score zero to 10. But it's also not just when the stress, what are the, your stressors? You have to be self-observant to so what are my problems? What changes from what stressors and the, how that affects me and how long it affects. And like I said, it could be acute stressor. It could be, okay, I have the flu. Yeah, I'm acute. sick. That's an acute stressor. What is the chronic stressor though is, oh, um, someone who has diabetes and always has Aww. to watch what they're eating, always having to take their sugar levels, having to do their insulin. That's a chronic problem. So it's going to be chronic disease. It, it, it can because you, you're, you're, you're having to watch all the time of what you can and cannot eat. Uh -huh. You can't just go out and party with your friends and, okay, let's have a fondue party <laughs> or with wine because the wine has lots of sugar. <laughs> Yeah, someone who control what not to eat or what to eat. And I think that stress go to my son because I don't control myself. <laughs> Except, and and it, it's balancing of how much are we going to control and where are we going to say our quality of life is ah. still there. And it's balancing the scales out. Since I mentioned my son, let me ask you, we are talking about many factors that cause stress. Mm -hmm. Is that possible to happen on kids, on children? Yes, yes. I mean, stress, no one is immune to stress. I mean, mm -hmm. it can happen when you're young to until you die even. I mean, but how it manifests is a bit different and the stressors that affect us are different. When it's kids, it could be family situations, um, peer pressure, school, uh, a topic that's quite viral these days is bullying. Aww. And bullying can be, it's not just the verbal bullying, it can be online bullying. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's out there. It exists. We just need to be grown up enough to deal with it. And by teaching children to mm -hmm. voice their concerns of, mom, dad, I don't feel right. Something's not the same. I feel different. And those feeling different can mean my heart's mm -hmm. feeling it's racing or I've got butterflies in my stomach. And as parents, our job is to say that's normal for us to have different reactions to different things that happen in our life. It's just how do we learn to overcome them, manage them, and move on, and I see. go on forward. Yes, yeah, since uh, uh, we have uh, that word bullying, yes, I think uh, if we got that case, uh, we should 
also bring those kids, not only one, uh, the yeah. one who got, the one who is who being was, bullied like, be, and the victim. bully. Yeah, yeah. They, they both have to see. Well, I mean, sometimes the bully, yeah, the, the bully themselves sometimes is also stressed or they themselves are the victims Why, they of someone else's debt. Yes. yes. They, they themselves are sometimes being bullied also. Uh -huh. And their only coping mechanism in life is, well, I've been bullied and that's how I sort of became a phoenix and survived that. So what I'm going to do to survive is I'm going to bully the next person and the next person. It's mm -hmm. a really bad chain reaction so it needs to be cut it needs to be stopped and so both the bully and the bullier the bully the bully and the <laughs> person being bullied they both need help yes and sometimes it's the parents uh-huh as i say uh since uh for example parents has also to detect what's happening we, we have to spend more time talking to our kids and uh, like observe yes and mm. check the feeling of the kids after school, for example. Not yeah. only ask, what how homework do you have? Did you finish it? Or only concern, did what you they get have in to trouble after with the, the class? Teacher. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and sometimes it's not just the parents. I mean, in Thai society, it's the expanded family. It could be the grandparents. It could be the nanny. It could be the uncles and aunts or cousins. But again, teachers too. I mean, they have to be on the lookout of why is that kid all of a sudden daydreaming? I mean, they used to do so good in school. Why are they, why are they failing? Uh, I mean, the ones that are dropping are easy to notice, but it's sometimes the ones that are so cheerful are so happy that they're actually masking their compensating for the pain inside uh, and well, okay i have to be a good boy i have to be a good girl i yeah, i am okay we're well, maybe inside, in front of someone yeah. but behind the scene maybe they're different crying. exactly oh, yes oh that's a lot of work <laughs> as a it parent is. it is yes it yes is. yes okay anyway we have to deal with it since our kids are our big poor chick <laughs> <laughs> and the first person who 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 are the one who can give them care and uh, check everything is should be but after you feel like you can hand you cannot handle it so you have to leave this job to the expert well mm -hmm. maybe not leave the job but ask for help yes. and collaborate together uh -huh. and like i said the support systems are always important mm -hmm. i mean sometimes we might think that okay they're broken they're not well i'll take them to the doctor and the doctor will fix them. A psychiatrist or any doctor is not the king's man who can put Humpty Dumpty back together again after yes. he's fallen off the wall. But what we can help do in collaboration with the family and the patient is reconstruct a better, healthier them. Yeah, by by experience, I feel like we once when we have one case or one person who has stress, we have to maybe talk to everyone in the family member who affect their life because I'm sure doctor can help, the psychiatrist can help, but if he or she has to step back to the same way of life, that will happen again. Yeah. If we don't see the whole picture of the problem, Exactly. I mean, for instance, my addiction patients, they've been going in and out of their addiction. And what happens is the family always thinks, oh, they're just going to slip and may mess up and go back into the drugs. If the family has that concept with them at this whole time, no matter how hard that ex-addict is trying to be an ex-addict, they, they can feel the aura that they're not welcome. They're always being watched of, oh, you're going to mess up. You're going to mess up. They do mess up. Oh. And mm -hmm. it's not that they mean to. It's just that they don't have the, well, they think I'm going to mess up anyway, so I might as well just mess up. Okay. <laughs> they'll, they'll just give up, which is so sad because oh. they're doing so good. But the ambience the atmosphere at the home is not welcoming so 
I mean, it, it has to be welcoming, it has to be supportive, but also what the doctors will always want to sometimes hear is if when they're hearing the story from the patient, mm -hmm. if it, we have to admit that sometimes what we're saying is our version, mm. but every story has so many perspectives. I mean, the most common picture that a lot of people will use is the picture of two people looking at the number six. Uh, is it um, a six or is it a nine? Uh, it's the same number. It's just, you'll see it as a nine, I'll see it as a six. Are either of us wrong? Are either of us right? Mm -hmm. We're both right, We're not, none of us are wrong. Mm -hmm. So sometimes a take from the family can help the situation of, no, we're not doing that. Oh, we are doing that? That's what they think we're doing? Okay, I, we didn't realize that that was maybe, how they were perceiving maybe it. We have to move to his corner to see why he said so yeah. or why he is acting like that. And it can help with the dialogue that they then have with each other. That was not my intention. I'm sorry that's how you took it, but this is what I really mean. And we're family. I care about you. I am here to support you. Mm -hmm. I just really care how can I word this differently so that you understand me, that I do mean well? So actually I want to ask how to manage the stress, but I think your answer is everywhere <laughs> from the beginning until now. Well, uh -huh. basically you, we need to manage the stress. We need to find the stressor first. We need to identify the problem. And if we can identify the problem, then we can do the problem solving, try and find out are there any solutions? What are alternatives that are healthy um, or healthier? And try them out. And if it doesn't work, we go back to the drawing board and come up with new solutions. It's ongoing. And what might have worked before might not work later. Uh huh. Or like if I said, it's worked with this person, maybe not work with the other person. Exactly. It's not a one size fits all. No. Okay, I see. So it should be tailor-made. <laughs> it does have to be tailor-made because <laughs> the stressors are different. The reactions are different. The, sometimes the reactions are different. It might be the same stressor. Like I said, birthday. Mm -hmm. For some people, the birthday is just fun. Mm -hmm. For some people, the birthday is stressful. The big four. Someone's mm. finally 40, 50, 60. They don't mm. want to age. That can mm -hmm. be stressful. Mm -hmm. But when a person turns 18, yay, I can drive, I can vote, uh -huh. I'm an adult. It, it's a birthday, but mm -hmm. the meaning for each person is different, which then leads to different mm -hmm. symptoms of stress. Someone who cared is so sure a lot may worry even, or straight even, who should I invite to my party? Can I invite <laughs> this person? Can I not invite if this I, person? If I don't call him, maybe it's also quite something. If I don't invite them, then they'll unfriend me and then. Oh, oh yeah. yeah it's... So uh, let me ask you, there are many friends of me, including me, myself. <laughs> um, we say killing time, killing stress, mean going out, eating something delicious with companion, mm -hmm. or go shopping, go drinking, go dancing, or travel. Go have fun. Have fun. There are many many uh, choices for that word, fun. Uh, is that the way to, for example, many friends said, I have to go out and drink every night and then I'm relaxed. I feel good after that. Is that okay to kill the stress? Mm. Well, that puts me at a spot because <laughs> I also treat addiction. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's okay to try and kill the stress. Each person will have a different way to kill the stress. Alcohol and drugs is a very common way uh -huh. <laughs> for a lot of people to kill stress. Why? It's very potent. It, it works quick. So as a band-aid, as first aid, yeah, it works. Uh -huh. But for long-term resolution, not the answer. When you're trying to find long-term solutions, we need to 
be within ourselves. We're observant. We have to have, have mindfulness. I mean, yeah, sure. Yoga, meditation, people will say you, that's what you need to do. You need to exercise. Yeah, but not everybody likes to exercise. Not everybody that likes to me sometimes. You have to do that and this, but not the thing I like. Yeah, <laughs> it, which is where you need to find alternatives that are healthy, uh, that you can enjoy. I mean, some people, when they're stressed, they cook or they go do their nails and uh, go buy, buy, go shopping. At the end of the day, any solution that is healthy, does it hurt you or other people is fine, but it needs to address the source of the stress and take care of that. Not just, yeah. Not just keep, keep stress, but it's still there. Yeah, if, if you're <laughs> just trying to numb the pain and not actually taking that cancer out, uh, it's still there. Okay. You can't just keep putting makeup and makeup over and over and over with tons of concealer. It's still there. Under the carpet. <laughs> Under the carpet. It's still there. You need to yank it out and fix the it. floor. <laughs> fix the floor, deal with it head on, uh -huh. and it will, you, you'll survive. It will hurt. It's a change. It's another stressor having to deal with the stress. Okay. But yeah. I, if you don't deal with it, I think I got you. Yeah. For example, go out drinking may also at the end of the month, maybe you're, you're shut off money because you spend a lot. Exactly. It uh, same as a lot. shopping. Exactly. <laughs> you will have a problem with your credit card. Yeah, well, oh, <laughs> got a call from the bank. Your limits <laughs> gone. That's, that is the way to, to, to the new stress. <laughs> we'll it, step into your life. It's the consequence. So you need to, if possible, <laughs> think of alternative solutions with better consequences. So that means stress also lead to other symptoms or sickness as well. Yes. Okay. Uh, I mean, not, not sickness of credit card. I mean, in yeah. our body? In our bodies. I mean, for example? For example, well, I mean, the stressors. Mm -hmm. They triggered all those chemical reactions I mentioned. I mean, could they could be in the brain, in our thyroids, our pancreas, or even our immune systems. I mean, oh. I mean, like, like muscle pain, muscle pains, aches and pains. I need to go see the massage again and again. The therapist, sure, go. Oh, it's that's those pain. stress. Yeah, um, headaches, um, not able to sleep, um, thyroid dysfunctions. Um, hunger and then you're having all these diabetic problems Ooh. i mean those are there Co people constantly having flus or their allergies flaring up oh. that's like their immune chain system is stuff. also not function well yeah so this can lead also to uh, also to their, their like serious sickness there have been several studies linking that people who have acute stress, chronic stress, eventually they are developing heart problems, mm -hmm. um, stomach ulcers, migraines, and they're chronic problems. They're chronic stress that are never addressed. Or they're minute stress that people say, oh yeah, it's okay. It's, it comes with the job, but you're not dealing with it. Mm -hmm. which is why it's causing you to have problems. But again, I mean, it's not the stress is the sole factor of someone having a heart attack. I mean, you've got to have that high cholesterol, oh. the hypertension, the smoking, the drinking. Uh -huh. it, it's a whole package. I think it, since to, to be like, or to have chronic stress, it also take a long time to have that kind of sickness that to heal it, to deal with it and to to solve this problem, I think also we have to do it step by step. For example, I learned something, and I think I can also share with my friend. Uh, going out drinking, maybe we have to reduce a uh, number of bottles, the number of, number of the nights. <laughs> yes, I mean <laughs> instead of every night, maybe my, end of the week or once Friday, Fridays, Fridays, uh, Friday like night that. out. I mean. Actually, anything in life, be it good or bad, moderation. Moderation is the key. And I mean, when it comes to drinking, it's like, what, two or three drinks, two or three times a day for girls or something like that. I mean, basically, don't drink silly. Don't drink and drive. 
<laughs> I'm not saying don't drink at all. That would just be, that I'd get is, in trouble. That is stress. Yeah. That is stress. Yeah. <laughs> not, not drinking at all can be stressful. But luckily, I mean, uh-huh. I, I mean, I've had patients who really have alcohol problems and I need to socialize or I own the bar. I cannot not drink. So what do I do? I can't just drink water and I having to pay for the water the same as someone who's paying for a beer. It's uh-huh. okay. That doesn't make sense. Luckily now there's zero percent beer, since, but it doesn't since, taste since the same. Since you say if someone owned the bar and cannot stop drinking, I think then the owner of the hospital has to be the patient. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. I feel so relaxed and I feel like I know way to treat myself. I know way to 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 share with friends and I'm thinking so many people who are listening to us now, you also have way to manage yourself, reduce some activity that costs you more stress and yeah, anyway, we don't want to leave everything on you once <laughs> if you need help see the expert and we are here um, not expecting you to be our patients but since you are here with us i am thinking we are living a better life because we know how to manage our stress and also manage our healthy behavior okay so if you have any questions you also can uh, type us and we will answer all the questions you may have but t- today we have to say thank you and it's the time that we have to leave you and enjoy your day thank you so much thank, thank you. you dr thank anika you. and thank we will see you again next time so stay tuned thank you and goodbye bye